Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and this is day 11. So we gotta do five, five and five is 10, and one is 11 <laughs> of the 12 days of junk journal gift ideas. This is a collaboration with the friendly junk journal people, uh, several members there and myself. This is something we started a couple of years ago and we're continuing it on. We've got one more day after today, so the 12 days will be over. I hope you're enjoying this series. I hope that you're inspired to create. Do check the description box down below for links to other tutorials by the other members that are participating. Also know that if you're watching any video on YouTube and you want to get through it a little bit faster, if you go down here just below, click on that little gear, you can change it to two times the speed. Now, I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do junk journals on Mondays. And then again on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, we do mixed media. All right, so today we were to make embellishments using bulb pins. These are those little pins that kind of look like, if you turn them this way, like a light bulb. But they're a safety pin. You could also use safety pins as well. I'm trying to look at my notes, see if there's anything else they said. Uh, bulb pin embellishments and different ways to use them. So I'll show you a couple ways to use them. So I wanted to make a tassel. I wanted it to be kind of a dangly charm thing. So this is going to be a little bit longer tutorial and give you some more things to play with. First, I want to make a tassel. So I've picked up a piece of cardboard, corrugated cardboard. It's approximately three inches by three and a half inches. It really doesn't matter. Part of what you'll want to know is how long do you want your tassel? So from here to here, this is three and a half inches. So it should be around three and a half inches. What I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm going to go in here on the side and make a snip and then make another snip and then I'm going to bend this back and cut it off and the reason why I'm doing that is I want to make a tassel and have an opening here so I'll be able to tie off my tassel and then pull it off so now that I've got that let's grab some fibers I've got some ribbon here I've got some yarn I've got some eyelash yarn I do offer some uh, yarns in fibers in my shop so if you are lacking in that department I do have a nice little selection that you can choose from so I've got these four pieces and I've already kind of pulled a length of it off of the holders and I'm going to take this and what I found is if I just put my thumb down here at the bottom and then I'm gonna this is gonna be one wrap and this will be two wraps and then come back down and I'm going to put my finger on the other side and hold it in place and I'm just going to snip it off just easy like that then I have you can't really see them very well but I have a whole bunch of embroidery thread Henry purchased an embroidery machine from a company and it was used of course and they gave us a bunch of thread however the thread had been sitting for a long time and if you try to use thread like this it will break so what I've done is I've got four different colors here and I've tied a little knot to kind of help hold them together while I'm doing this process. And I'm going to wrap this about 10 times. So one, two, and I'm just going to keep doing that. And I'm okay that it's over my thumb. I'm just going to trim off the excess here. I'm going to put my fingers on top for a second. And then I've got an oversized paper clip that I'm just putting over the whole mess to kind of hold it in place until I'm done. I've got a needle with some thread on it, just some black thread I had left over. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna scooch this over so I can see this opening. And I'm going to poke my needle through that opening here. I'm gonna do it twice. So poke it through once. I'm gonna pull up my slack just a little bit. Hang on to that tail and then poke it back through. Make sure I've got all the pieces. All right, so I've wrapped it through here twice, and now I'm gonna tie a knot, and I'll tie one more knot. I'm gonna hold my thread out of the place, out of the way, and then I'm gonna go back through this opening here about three to four times, just kind of wrapping this upper portion around the tassel to keep those fibers together. 
All right, so now I'm just going to tie this off again, and this will be the last time I tie it off. So I just tied that off, and now what I'm going to do is just pull these fibers down to the same length as my tassel and trim them off. And I've got a little bit of length left. I'll save that for later on in case I need it. I'm going to grab a bulb pin. So I'm just trying to find one. Yep. So I've got, uh, by the way, I do sell some of these bulb pins in my shop. So again, if you don't want thousands of them, you just want about 25 or so, I have little kits that you can get these bulb pins. So I'm just slipping it underneath and grabbing all those fibers. I'm going to go ahead and close it just so I know it's closed. Then I'll remove this paper clip. I'm going to slip my scissors under here and just snip this. And then I'll just gently pull it off. And so now I have this template that I can sit and make more tassels this size if I want. So I've got this tassel made, so I'm going to set that aside. The next thing I want to do is I want to make a beaded component. So I've got some beads in here, and I'm going to grab a length of wax linen thread. I thought I would show you all how to make like a little charm dangle using beads and such, but not having to have, you know, jump rings and chains and that kind of stuff. So I've got a little length of thread here. It's probably roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, so probably about 13 inches long. And I'm folding it in half. And then I'm going to make a, I call it a slip knot. It's where you kind of turn it upon itself, pull it in, and just make a little knot. I want a little loop up here so I can use that to hang. Okay, so now I've got two little tails. And now I'm going to grab some beads. So I've got this pretty red bead here. You know, take apart those pieces of jewelry that are broken. Uh, you can pick up things at thrift stores. You can buy real beads. And if you're a jewelry maker like I have been in the past, you can use jewelry making supplies. So I'm just going to grab, oh, three beads-ish, I think. I don't know if I have more than that, but I'm going to at least grab three beads and string it on one side here. Okay, so I've just got those three beads. Let me change the zoom. Maybe that'll help y'all. All right, so I've got those three beads on there. And then I've got a little beaded component that I made. I will tell you that if you're using like a little beaded component, you want to make sure that this loop at the top is closed all the way so it doesn't slip off your thread. And all I'm going to do is feed that through and pull it up. And then I'm going to make a knot. Easier said than done sometimes. Make a little knot up here. I found if I use like a little tool to help position that knot where I want it, I can get it down just a little bit and pull it tight. But I don't want it so tight that it um, is stiff. All right, so I've got that down once, so I'm going to go ahead and loop it around and then kind of make like a two maybe looped knot here. And then I'm just going to trim off this string. You could put a drop of glue there if that makes you feel better. I'm not going to. I'm just, you know, going to let it go. All right, so there's one side. Now I've got this side. Let's do some beading on here. I've got this black bead. You can use plastic beads. You can use glass beads. You know, use whatever you have that you feel comfortable using. This time I have this little uh, bead capped flower. And I'm going to go ahead and slip through there and then make a little knot. Use my tool to help get that knot where I want it. And I'll tie another knot on here. And again, I'll trim off the excess. All right, so now I've got a little dangle of beads, if I can get a hold of it. So I've got a little dangle of beads here. I've got my little tassel. I have a little length of lace here. So I'm going to open up the pin and I'm going to place the lace on that pin. Then I'm going to put this little beaded component on there. But I'm not going to close this up yet because I'm not quite ready. All right, so then I've got a couple of calico collage images, and these are normally printed as an artist trading card size. So normally these would come out at two and a half by three and a half inches. So what I did on my computer is I told it to print this 
normally eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper as a five by seven sheet of paper. And what I did, I got these much smaller images. And then I also printed a word file of Norella's from Calico Collage. And I did the same thing. I told it to print as a five by seven. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take these and glue these back to back. I put it so that when the word is on here and you flip it over, it reads going in the same direction. All right, so I'll set that aside and then I'm gonna glue these back to back. All right, I've got some distressing ink here that I'm gonna use in just a moment, but before I do that, I want to round these corners. So I'm going to use the quarter inch of the Crocodile We Are Memories Chomper, Corner Chomper, and chomp off these corners. So I got that one done. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the flower images. Okay, so now I'm gonna use some Distress inks all the way around on both of these pieces. All right, so now that I've got those Distress, what I'm gonna do now is I've got a copper dial hole punch. It's also an eyelet setter, but I'm gonna use this to punch a hole at the top and bottom of this piece. And then I'm gonna punch a hole at the, where, the top of the word. And I'm okay that it kind of maybe goes into the word, it's okay. So now I'm gonna take a bulb pen and I'm gonna attach the word to the bottom of my little flowers. And then I'm gonna grab my bulb pen from over here and we're gonna attach it to the bottom of the flowers. I'm gonna grab another bulb pen and I'm gonna put it at the top. Okay, so we're getting there. It's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna take one of these self-adhesive rhinestones and I'm removing it from the little backing. And let's put one, let's put one right about there. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put another one down. All right, so here's what it looks like after it's all been put together. What do you think? So you've got the little word, you've got a nice little tassel and beads. And you can add as much or as little as you want. You could even add charms on there, but I just wanted to add a few little things like that. Okay, so now that I've shown you how to make one of those, let me show you some ways to use them. So this is a journal that I have ready made. And what I can do is I've got a paper clip that I've just slipped through on here. And this can then be put, oh, sticking out the side if we want. So you have a little dangle off of the side. You could put it where it's at the top. So maybe you want to have a bookmark or something, you can do it up there. You could also take one of these and poke a hole. So if you poke a hole, maybe right up here, and then just take the bulb pin and attach it through the hole. Or you could even take this and attach it onto the binding of your journal. So however you bind it. So let's just kind of pin that on there. And so this can be now here on the journal as well. And then let me show you different ones I made. So here is Imagine and Inspire. And we've got Admire and Remarkable. Sincerity and Flourish. This one I used some different beads and flowers on. Dazzling and Courageous. This one is Majestic and Bloom. We've got Faith and Embrace. This one says Cherish and Beautiful. And this is Heavenly and Effer, uh, what is it, Effervesc Effervescent? I can't ever say that word. So y'all know how educated I am. <laughs> All right. Well, there is my take on using bulb pens to make bulb pen embellishments. I hope you like this tutorial. Do check out the description box for the others who have created tutorials. And of course, come back and check me out when I am live or my other videos that I have here. At the end, I will have a prompt that you can go to the 12 Days of Junk Journal Gift Ideas playlist that has 
I think it's got 60, maybe even 70 videos by now that you can peruse and enjoy and hopefully inspire you. All right, everybody, leave me a comment if you have any comments or questions. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.